All right, all right, all right. Texas mother shoots burglar while hiding with children in home. That's an upstanding citizen you can tell by looking at him. Yeah. How dare you judge? A Texas woman shot a man through her door after he broke into her house through the garage and tried to get into her bedroom. Hidalgo, this is in Texas, by the way, if I didn't already say that. Hidalgo County Sheriff's deputies responded at around 9.15 p.m. on October 25th to reports of a burglary in the 5500 block of Nardo Street in Edinburgh, Texas. The homeowner told police that she warned the suspect the police had been called and that she had a gun. The man still tried to get into the bedroom after refusing to leave. You mean he didn't care? Wow. What? Homeowner shot once through the door, causing the su suspect to flee. According to the sheriff's office, the suspect was found approximately 100 yards away in an open field with a gunshot wound to his left arm, and he was taken to the hospital. Carlos Garcia, 36, was arrested and charged with burglary of habitation with intent. Hmm. Garcia is being held at the County Adult Detention Center with a bond set at $750,000. Uh, the sheriff said that, quote, this is an active investigation. We encourage witnesses with any additional information regarding this case to come forward, end quote. Well, there you go. All right. I'm not sure what else you need. Uh, he was in her house. He broke into her house. He got shot and fled. So... Well, she would have had a restraining order that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, that's true. Uh, now, Jared and Zachary, um, either one of you can answer this question. We have discussed this uh, multiple times, but I'm going to talk about it again. There's three types of attackers that you will encounter, a type one, a type two, and a type three. Which one was this guy? He was a type three. Nope. But, oh, you're right. Type two. He was type I type am right. Two. Yeah. He's I was a like, two. Uh, in my head, type two was type three, but I was yeah. wrong. So type one, when you when they're uh when they meet with resistance, when they meet with active resistance, you pull out a gun, point it at them, and say, Stop. They say, Okay, I will stop. I will run away. I will flee. I'll get out of here. I'll beat feet. This one, she's like, I call the cops, I have a gun. And he said, I don't care. Then he received a non-life-threatening injury. And once he was injured, a type 2 will not stop until they are injured, until they receive some type of injury, though non-life-threatening. And then they decide, oh, this isn't fun anymore, and uh, then they leave. A type 3 is not going to stop until they receive enough physiological damage that they can no longer keep going you say okay great what does that mean well what it means is you as the armed homeowner or as the concealed carrier or whatever as the citizen you need to understand that these monsters are out there you also need to understand that you're not going to know what kind whether it's a type one two or three until the fight is what over, over until it ends you know they, they don't show up and they don't hand you a business card and say hi i am about to assault you but i am a type one attacker and if you show me nice active resistance i will quit would be super nice yes no that's not how that works so you meant you must mentally be prepared the good news is most attackers that you encounter will be ones and twos the bad news is uh, if you ca encounter a three and you're not mentally prepared for that, they will kill you. They will destroy you. They might die eventually, but if you die and they die, you know, when it comes to personal defense and security, you lose all ties. You get that, right? You guys understand that? You lose all ties. A tie, well... They, they, you shoot them, uh, they don't die, and then they continue to stab you, and then you die, and then they run away and die a mile away. So they died too. So it's a tie. Uh, but you, you still lose. 
So you don't, we don't lose, right? I, I don't train people to lose. I train people to win. So you, we need to understand this, and we need to be mentally prepared that when we're, we encounter one of these monsters that, uh, well, we just had that during, a, what, about a, three weeks ago? The one who, the mother who was in, taking a shower, and the guy broke in. Oh, yeah. And she ran dripping wet, naked to her bedroom, you know, grabbed a gun, and she's yelling that the guy stop, and the dogs are barking at him, and he wasn't going to stop. And he didn't stop until she shot him, and then he expired. So uh, you have to be mentally prepared that they're not going to be impressed by the fact that you have a gun. And, and those people out there who think that I'll just tell them I have a gun and that'll scare them away, or I'll point an empty gun at them and that'll scare them away, uh, this is proof that that doesn't work and they don't care. If you point an empty gun at somebody like this, they're probably going to pull it out of your hand and they're going to beat your skull in with the empty gun. Do you, you don't want that, do you? You don't want your skull being beaten in with your own empty gun? No. No, okay. So, uh, go team moment. Go team for this mom. Uh, the sad the sad state of affairs is that this guy, uh, since he was wounded and not killed, he's still alive, he's good to go. Uh, since he did not actually harm the woman or her family, he'll go to prison for a little while. And even in Texas, he'll do maybe half of the sentence. And then he'll be back out on the street and he'll go rob and murder or rape somebody else. Because that's what goes on in America today. Because the jurisdiction or the uh, judicial system does not give two craps about you as a citizen. It's up to you to defend yourself. End of story. All right, we've got another one. We've got kind of a part two to our uh, Crossbreed Holsters Dangerous On Demand segment. And that's what Crossbreed Holsters... Uh, the homeroom is all about. It's about being dangerous on demand. Now, I I should, I would be remiss, and I don't want to be remiss, if I didn't remind you freaks that you can get your butts over to Crossbreed Holsters, use the promo code SOTG, get a made-in-the-USA high-quality holster so you can actually carry your freaking gun on you, which would be, I think that would be a good idea, uh, actually to carry your freaking gun. And they also, uh, we're gonna, they're going to give you a discount. So I think it's a good thing. It's nice of them. That is nice of them. The question came from Nathan T. on our Discord server. That's com slash Discord. He says, I've been carrying a folding knife for the past few years, and I've really liked it, but I've been debating the necessity of having a dedicated fixed blade as well. So in addition to the folding knife, a fixed blade knife. Is Are there any real justifications and if so particularly good examples of smaller uh, fixed blade knives okay good question good question jared take a gander at that real quick that's by my finger no. uh question now we 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 do the uh lethal sharp bright medical now when we do the lethal sharp bright medical uh generally we're talking about a lethal meaning a firearm, something that you can use to stop bad people from doing bad things to you, right? Uh, sharp is generally a utility tool, right? I use my pocket knife not as a self-defense tool. I mean, I could if I had to, but every day I use it to to cut and pry and, and not pry heavy stuff, but you know what I mean. Uh, and then, of course, bright is a bright flashlight, uh, which I use every single day. And then medical, and uh, that's something that you should have on you because you're probably going to use the medical probably 100 times more often than you would use the lethal, but they're all important. Now, the question that you need to ask yourself is, are you intending to use the, the fixed blade as the lethal uh, and not do the gun part? And if that's the case, okay, cool. Where is your mental focus? You see, if we give ourselves, if we give ourselves, I'm not going to say too many options, but if we create a mental confusion, we don't want to create a mental confusion when it comes to what are we carrying and why are we carrying it. 
Uh, and it's not there's nothing wrong with having a backup plan. There's nothing wrong with that at all. A fixed blade is fixed blades are good because you don't have to take the time to open it. And, and you're like, oh, yeah, but I, I'm really good at opening my knife. I can inertia do it. And I, yeah, okay, I got that. Um, but there's a big difference between you standing in your bedroom playing with your knife and someone shoving you up against the wall with their hand on your throat, banging your noggin off of the freaking uh, concrete and doing it then. Uh, so... One of my favorites, and it's it's been around for a while, which is it's just kind of crazy because I remember when this thing was brand new. I remember when the inventor, John Benner, showed me the prototype, and he's like, hey, this is look what I came up with. Uh, it's called the TDI Law Enforcement Knife or the TDI Backup Knife. Uh, K-Bar, the, the K-Bar company, came up with these. Uh, it's K-Bar, right? TDI Knife? Yeah, the K-Bar TDI Knife. Um, or am I losing my mind? No, I'm, it's K-Bar. Okay, the reason I, I got a little bit confused, Jared, is because... The little tiny one that has is kind of like a hook? Yeah. Yeah, yeah K-Bar TDI the original Law Enforcement T Knife Fixed Blade. The, the reason I got a little bit confused is because when John invented this, he shopped it around to a bunch of different knife manufacturers, and most of them said, no, no, it's weird. People won't like it. It's different. I don't understand. And they told him no. And I love this story because John's like, no, you don't understand. This is, this is, it's not for, you know, martial arts or Escrima or whatever. It's for, it's the GTFO knife, yeah. right? It's the get the Farfic Nugent off of me uh, knife. And K-Bar said, okay, we'll take a chance. They're only 50 bucks. Yeah. Oh, they said, K-Bar said, okay, we'll take a chance. And they made it, produced it, and it's been very popular. And the, so the TDI knife now actually comes in several different configurations. Uh, there's a, I, I want to get this one, Jared. I want to get this lady finger. Yeah, that's, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, uh, and, and it's basically designed to be a woman's, you know, concealed, a very discreet concealed knife that a woman could use to make you gtfo um that if, if you're looking for something like that okay that's not a really a utility knife it's the you're not allowed to touch me and i want you to get off of me right now and i'm gonna carve on you with this sharp thing until you decide that you don't want to touch me anymore that's pretty much it yeah. <laughs> it's like you shouldn't have grabbed me, and now I'm going to I'm going to carve on you until you stop grabbing me, because uh, nobody has the right to touch you in public. Nobody has the right to grab you. No one has the right to assault you. And if they put their hands on you, then you should, well, either shoot them off of you or carve them off of you. That is what I'm going to tell you. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Uh, there there really is. Just uh, whatever you have. You need to understand that you have to practice with it. Uh, I don't know if they still sell the red-handled practice knives or not. Uh, they probably didn't make a lot of money on those, and so they're like, eh, we'll drop them. That's basically how knife companies are. All knife companies are like, eh, we're not making any money off these things. Drop them. Which, I, you know, I, I respect. They got to make money. They can't give crap away. Um, but... Uh, yeah, the K-Bar TDI knife, they've got an investigator. I'd like to get my paws on that and just see how it compares to the original because I have one of the originals. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Nathan. I hope it wasn't too confusing. But uh, And I would also suggest to you guys, if you're going to carry a fixed blade knife on your person, you need to make a decision where it's going to be and always put it there. Don't move it around. Don't switch it. Because if you ever get to the point where someone has got you pinned up against the wall, you know, in a bathroom stall or an elevator or whatever, and you need them to GTFO, you don't want to be playing the, hey, where's my knife today game. You should be able to find it immediately and and carve that a-hole right off of you. So uh, that is, that's that, Mr. That's that. If that helps you out. And the link is in the show notes if you guys want to go in there and uh, and get it. 